Hey, my name's Max. I'm the editor of the show Bumper to Bumper on Donut Media. It's a show where we feature unique and interesting cars every Tuesday. Now there's a lot that goes into making a YouTube video, but honestly, one of the most important stages that a lot of people overlook is the editorial stage. Now, you gotta remember, as the video editor, you literally control the final form of the video before it goes into viewers' eyeballs, so it's very important to nail the edit. Today I'm gonna be going over some of my favorite tips and tricks of the trades that I use in my editing that uh, should hopefully give you a little bit of an edge over those other content creators in your own editing. So, let's get into my first favorite technique. In this scene, we need to transition from this shot to this shot. The problem, of course, is that if we just do a hard cut from shot to shot, viewers' brains will be completely confused because they'll think, well, wait, wait a second, how did he just get from here to here? So we're gonna need to have a smooth transition to ease them into that next shot so that it will make sense for their brains. If you're just starting out with editing, you might use a simple technique like a cross dissolve. And I mean, look, that totally gets the job done, but we gotta do something a little bit more creative if we wanna get our viewers' attention here. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take these two clips, select them, and then you're gonna wanna put them into an After Effects composition. Right about here, if we scrub through our comp here, that's a great place. We're gonna start our transition. I'm gonna take this clip right here and I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna do a freeze frame right on that frame. And I'm gonna just make a mask that goes right through Jeremiah's mouth. So we're gonna just use our pen tool here to do that. And I, I do find that this is a really good way to learn all about your friends and their bodies. The main part here is that we get that lip right. You don't need to worry about the rest of it. So if we turn off our main other layer here, you can see we just have his lip. We're gonna go ahead and duplicate that layer. And if we go to our mask settings, we're gonna invert the mask. And so basically now we have the two halves of his mouth. And you may notice that there's a little bit of a, sort of a pixel gap here and we can really see that. So it's super easy to fix. We're just gonna um, change the expansion of the mask. Now we totally got rid of it. So you don't even notice that it's there. So the next stop is the liquify tool. And this is a really neat tool. You can do all kinds of fun morphing. So we're gonna drag that onto our top layer here and we're just gonna kinda open up his mouth just a little bit. I think that looks good. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other layer for the top half of his face. But keep in mind, when you open your mouth, other parts of your face move, it's not just your lips. So we can actually increase the size of our brush here and we can really start, yeah, see his nose moves a little bit when we open it. So we're gonna just make sure those seals on his lips are nice and normal. Now this next step is optional, but it's something that I like to do that adds just a little bit of extra flair to your videos. We can use this bulge tool here and we can just kind of almost augment his, his eyeballs to make them a little bigger. Great, so now we have Jeremiah with uh, open mouth and big ol' eyeballs. So we can keyframe the distortion percentage from zero. And then we're gonna keyframe that to 100 and now his mouth is open. Of course, the problem here is this transparency behind our mouth. So we can just use our rectangle tool to make a shape layer so that when it opens up, it's nice and dark in there. And we can actually change the fill color to match the color of his actual mouth. So it's as if you don't even notice at all. We can add a little bit of an ease to the keyframe also just to make it look a little bit more organic. And then we're gonna take these layers and we're gonna drag them out just over our second clip here. And this is the second part of the transition here that we're gonna focus on. We're gonna be actually zooming into his mouth hole. The way I prefer to do is with a one node 3D camera. So if we go to layer, new camera, we're gonna do a one node camera. You don't need to worry about any of those little details there. We're gonna create that. And in order for our layers that we just created to be affected, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that those are 3D layers. So you set your initial keyframe at its neutral position. And then at the very end here, change that position. Getting pretty close there. And we are in. This is also a good opportunity to mess with the curves of the animation, just to make sure that it's kind of a nice, natural camera zoom feel. That looks pretty good. The problem, of course, now is that it's it's pretty dark in here, isn't it? Well, don't worry, we're gonna just adjust the opacity of our shape layer that we created earlier. We're gonna put a keyframe here at 100. When we get to the very end of our motion here, we're gonna change that to zero. And now all of a sudden, we're on the other side. So why don't we pop open that hood and see what's going on in that engine bay. That's how you open a hood the fast way. <laughs> So that's a nice seamless transition and if we've done our job, the audience won't even know that there was a cut at all. 
In this shot, Jeremiah is attempting to start this 20-year-old Honda Civic, and it's a very emotional scene. The problem, of course, audiences' eyeballs don't necessarily know where to look here. They could be looking over here. They could be looking over here. They could be looking over here. We want them to be looking right on that money maker. The way we're gonna achieve this is with a punch in. Now you could do this in Premiere, you could just punch right on in. The issue is that as we play this, his face kind of dips in and out of frame when we're that zoomed in, and that creates a problem because all of a sudden now, the thing we want our audience to look at is no longer on the screen. So we'll reset the motion there and we're gonna take this right on into After Effects. We're gonna uh, keyframe the position and scale. We're gonna give that about a five frame little gap there, and we're gonna zoom way on in, and I'm gonna do about 700%. Pull up your tracker tab right here, and we're gonna press this button here that says Stabilize Motion. And so this will bring up a tracking point. You're usually gonna wanna pick a point that's really obvious, like a freckle or a mole, something that has a lot of contrast that's not gonna dip in and out of frame. I think what I'm gonna do on Jeremiah here is I'm gonna use this little portion of his ear. So right around there should be pretty good. I'm gonna press this play button here, and it's just gonna sort of do its magic. Okay, so right at the end there, it actually kind of got messed up. So we can just delete those keyframes and we can just move it by hand to make sure that we uh, get that in the right spot. So if we press apply, this will now stabilize our entire shot and we can scrub through it, but we're not quite done yet. You can actually turn off your constant proportions on the scale setting and this is very valuable to make sure that his face takes up that important screen real estate. And this is a very subtle effect. And he sort of starts to dip out here, so we'll add another position and scale keyframe, and we'll just make sure we get him right in the center there. Now, because we've done this, audiences know exactly what to look at. So that is the second technique. We're gonna move on to the third and final technique today. This is possibly one of the most important things that you could ever have in your YouTube channel, and that is a celebrity cameo. Now this is gonna be the opening shot of my video, but it's kind of boring, I mean, it's just a car. So we're gonna to have to pick which celebrity we wanna use in this video. We're gonna type in list of famous celebrities. And now the number one result that comes up here for the most famous person is Brendan Fraser. So we're gonna click on his profile here. And as you can see now, we've got all these nice images of Brendan Fraser. Now this is very important, guys. You can't just take any image off of Google and put it in your video. If you were using copyrighted material, that would be like super not cool and you can actually get your video taken down. So one uh, suggestion that I like to do is to use the tools tab on Google, change the usage rights to labeled for reuse with modification. I'm just looking through these images right here. This one looks pretty good. If we go to the source image, we can see that it is actually public domain, which means we are totally clear to use it. We don't have to worry about getting copy strikes on our account. This is a perfectly usable image of Brendan Fraser. There is a problem though. Only his upper torso is in frame, and we are gonna want a full body shot of Brendan Fraser. So you're gonna wanna copy this image here, and we're gonna open up Adobe Photoshop and just paste that image of Brendan Fraser in. And we're gonna just kinda start cutting away with the pen tool. So we're gonna start at the bottom of his arm here, so we're in his hair now, and see he's got these nice spikes in his hair. So we're gonna just make sure we nail those spikes pretty good. And we're really learning the curves of Brendan's body here too, which is also a, a nice plus to this exercise. We're gonna copy that and we're gonna make a new document now. We're gonna paste our Brendan in there and delete that background layer. And we're gonna just make this a little bit bigger with the crop tool because we are going to be adding on. I do actually happen to have a candid photograph of myself on my desktop that we can drag into Photoshop here. Just a photograph of me. So start at the hips, we're gonna just kinda work our way down there. Again, we're gonna make a selection, we're gonna copy that, and we're gonna paste it into our document here with Brendan Fraser. Now, the problem is that the size isn't perfect. You can just kinda eyeball it by hand. We don't need to be exact about it. Go ahead and use our warp tool now so that we can just match the belt line up with his jacket. Press enter now and we'll lock that in place. And next stop, we're gonna get his hands. Hands can be tricky. There's a lot of intricate curves and whatnot, but we'll just do our best here and it does not need to be perfect. Just move that into place. And I'm gonna move this layer below Brendan's body and we're just gonna kinda scale this just about there I think is good. We can actually just do a little cheat trick here and we can duplicate this layer and we can just flip it horizontally. So we'll put that in place. 
we have a pretty good transparent image of Brendan Fraser now and you wouldn't have even known the difference if you hadn't seen me do it. And we can just kind of put him right on frame and scale him to about where we want him. If we play the video, that looks pretty good to be honest with you, but I think we can take it a little step better. And again, we are going to put them into After Effects. We are gonna use the tracker panel again, but instead of using stabilized motion, we're gonna be using track camera. Give it a couple minutes, After Effects is gonna kind of work its magic, and then we'll come back to that in just a moment. So now we've got all these little 3D tracking points that After Effects has generated using the tracking data. I know I want Brendan to stand somewhere around here near the rear of the car. So we're going to select this point. We're going to create a null and camera. We're going to link the Brendan Fraser layer to that null object and then make it a 3D layer. Now you're going to see he's really small there. So we're going to scale him up. And remember, Brendan Fraser is about six foot three. So it's very important to nail these proportions here. And I think that's just about the right height where we want him. Brendan Fraser now has the position data from that null object. So that looks probably 100 times better than the way we had it before we did this 3D camera rig. But we're not quite done. There's one other thing I want to do to just really increase the realism of this. And that is to add a shadow. Start by moving your anchor point down to his feet. And then we're going to duplicate the Brendan Fraser layer. And on that duplicate, we're going to change the orientation so that he's down there on the ground. Now we're going to use a fill effect to just turn that black and change the opacity down to 17% or so looks pretty good. We're going to add just a nice little uh, Gaussian blur on there just to kind of diffuse that shadow a bit. Now obviously this isn't the most perfect way to add a shadow, but it really gets the job done and I think it adds that extra layer of realism that we're looking for. So check out the difference. This is our before footage. after. We've got a real celebrity cameo right next to our Honda Civic. Audiences literally won't be able to click away from this, so this is exactly what we wanted. Alright guys, so that's all I have for you today. Hopefully you uh, learned some really valuable tips and tricks that you can apply to your own YouTube videos. Again, my name is Max. You can follow me on Instagram at 35 mm underscore cars, which is a very complicated name to say out loud. And make sure you subscribe to Donut Media on YouTube so you can watch Bumper to Bumper and see some of my edits in action. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.